Mohammed Akhtar from Pakistan wrestles in a bantamweight contest against Jamison of Australia. The object is to get your opponent's shoulders flat on the canvas. Akhtar went on to win the gold medal in his weight and Jamison the silver. at the stadium on the final day, everyone has been waiting to see Herb Elliott of Australia, who many say is the world's greatest miler of all time. On a cold and blustery day, Elliott proves his worth running with that easy, relaxed, yet immensely powerful stride, and all the time opening the gap between himself and Merv Lincoln and Gordon Perry, as if the elastic that held them together has suddenly snapped. And of course, in this modern age, the time was less than four minutes. Merv Lincoln second, little Albie Thomas third. One, two, three for Australia. The pole vaulters, Kruger of South Africa. Ditta of Pakistan. Jeff Elliott of England, who won the event. Boxing reporters say that there are no fights so fast and clean as between amateurs. Number 59, Tom Kawiri of Uganda and Bob Scott of Scotland in the welterweight class. on to win a silver medal. Here in the relay is where the months of preparation really count. It doesn't matter how fast you are if the takeover is not perfect. It's the England team first in a new Commonwealth Games record of 40.7 seconds. It's nearly all over, but the men are not to have the last honours. The women's relay is the climax of the day. Set. Even if the games have been on for nearly 10 days, it's still a nerve-wracking business. In the relay, there's always the fear of dropping the baton. It's the England team who break the tape in a new world record of 45.3 seconds. The presentation of the medals is a difficult moment in the games for the competitors. You are glad that there are others with you this time. Madeline Weston, June Paul, Dorothy Hyman, Heather Young. Even for the most experienced competitor, it is hard to keep the lump out of your throat.
the citizens of London wanted to add their welcome. And when all the games were over, the competitors came to the capital. In the city's ancient guild hall, the Lord Mayor and Lady Mayoress welcome the athletes. It is not often that young people from the five continents of the world come together in one place. Those that came as strangers are strangers no more. The Commonwealth Games has drawn them all together. Members of one family, a family that spans the world. All London is open to them, Big Ben, the Tower of London, an English summer's day at Buckingham Palace. The fountains of Trafalgar Square. It's time to go home. Those with medals, those without. All of them will have their memories of these three weeks, and Wales, too, will remember them. Now the great arenas are empty, but still alive with the memory of great events. Who can go into Cardiff Arms Park without remembering the supremacy and power of Herb Elliot? Who can watch boxing in Sophia Gardens without remembering the sportsmanship of the games? Who can forget the record-breaking swimmers and the graceful divers at the Empire Pool? Who can go into the mountains of North Wales without seeing in the mind's eye the thin racing shells lifting over the rough waters of Lake Paddon? There are no permanent memorials to the games. But in our minds, we will always carry memories of Wales and memories of friends. If some of these fade a little with time, we will never forget the closing ceremony and the voice of the Queen. Her Majesty proclaimed the 6th British Empire and Commonwealth Games of 1958 at Cardiff to be concluded and called upon us, the youth of the Commonwealth, to assemble in four years' time in Perth, Western Australia, there to celebrate the seventh British Empire and Commonwealth Games. She asked us to display there the same cheerfulness and concord so that the spirit of our family of nations might be carried on with ever greater eagerness, courage and honor for the good of humanity and the peace of the world.